Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. It's Russell with Ink and Paper Blog. How are you doing today? I hope you are doing very, very well on a very lovely day. Um, I'm coming to you back to back because I am going to be traveling in Cleveland for work for the next five business days. And I don't know if I'm gonna be able to sneak in any time to do a video. So I definitely wanted to get some content out to you guys. And I think they're two important videos. Yesterday I did my June wrap up and today I am doing my top 10 books of 2018 so far. Um, uh, this was a hard list to come up with, I have to be honest. There were a number of books that were very close, very close to making this list. I tried to convince myself to cheat and go outside of a top 10, but then I decided, you know what, Russell, be disciplined, cut some books, make a decision. So who knows which of these books will wind up on my top 10 at the end of the year. Um, but right now they are definitely top 10 books that if you ask me what I've read this year that I would definitely recommend to you, you're about to get a pretty fantastic list. So as always, pen, paper, Goodreads, however you get those. And if you have um, already read these, um, fantastic. If you haven't, I recommend getting them on your TBR. I promise they're worth the read. So the first book I'm going to talk to you about is the only graphic novel on my list, and that's I Kill Giants by Joe Kelly and J.M. Ken Nomura. Um, this was given to me as a gift by my friend Richard over at Richard Reads, and I'm so thankful because it's definitely one of those graphic novels that I think about all the time, and it was just recently turned into a motion picture, so you can definitely do a duo where you read this and then you also go see the film and see how they compare with each other. Now, this is the story of a young girl who believes in her mind of minds that she is training to kill giants if they ever return to the world. She has a bag full of mythical weapons and she has been training and she's isolated herself from the other kids in her school because she, of this, this sort of weird uh, fascination she has with killing giants. Now, a new girl moves to town and, and wants to befriend her, and it causes sort of an opening into this, um, to our young protagonist's life, and we find out that home has, um, she's dealing with some stuff at home. Um, I don't want to give too much away because I think the scenes where you finally start to realize uh, everything that's going on with her um, are very powerful, very um, well done, and I don't want to give anything away. But this is not a long read, but it is a powerful little read. And I have to say, look at the art. The art is so good. It's so good, you guys. It's definitely worth picking up. So if you are a graphic novel lover and you haven't read I Kill Giants by Joe Kelly and J.M. Ken Nomura, I highly, highly recommend it. And there you go. Kicked off the top 10 list. The next book I'm going to tell you about is the novel Girls Burn Brighter by Shoba Rao. This is a fantastically sad, fantastically sad book. And I will also tell you the audiobook of this is also fantastic, but it is not a happy book. So just be ready for that. But you guys know that's sort of my bread and butter. This is the story of two girls, um, Pornima and Savita, and they live in a village in India. Um, and um, Pornima is a little bit better off than um, Savita. Pornima's father owns a little tiny hut where they create saris, and Porti uh, Pornima is his daughter. Um, and then you have also Sativa comes to work for uh, Pornima's father, and they become friends. Um, Pornima gets um, married off in an arranged marriage, and her life goes one direction. Um, and it is a harrowing direction. She, gets, she marries into an awful family, and she has to deal with all of that. And then Porti, uh, Savita um, uh, is, um, I'm, I don't want to give anything away, but something happens to her that totally changes the course of her life, and she goes in a totally different direction, and she doesn't have the same resources of Portima. So she has to make different life choices. Now, um, what happens is Portima comes to the United States and so does Savita and Portima comes to find. And it becomes a tale of two friends touched by each other's friendship and one friend's search for the other. Um, again, you guys, this book is dark and harrowing, but it is beautifully written. The story is powerfully told and I highly, highly recommend Girls Burn Brighter by Shoba Rao. I love this so much, I went out and bought her a short story collection. 
The next book I talked about actually in my June wrap up yesterday, but I definitely want to talk to you about No One Can Pronounce My Name by Rakesh Chatal. Um, I don't have to say much about this. This is sort of a fantastic book about discovery of who you are. This is, oh, another book with two Indian main characters. Um, but this book takes place in Cleveland, Ohio. Um, we have um, Hari, who comes here with his mother and sister. And then we have Rajina, who moves here with her husband. And she has a young a son who has just gone to college. They're both trying to figure out who they are. At the beginning of the novel, we find out that um, Harit's sister has passed away and his mother is in mourning and he is trying to get her through that, but it also has stunted who he is as a person. They meet each other and let's just say that through each other's friendship, there's a lot of self-discovery. This is a great book if you are looking for a um, LGBTQ plus novel. This is a great book if you're looking for a novel about women finding their own power and strength um, it's a great novel about what you do when you your kids leave for school and you don't know exactly what your life is going to be. There's so much to this, and it is very, very good. And that is No One Can Pronounce My Name by Rakesh Chital. This is on paperback. This is a book, good book to take to the beach or to the pool and read because it's it's got some tough moments, but it also has a lot of heart. So you'll feel very uplifted. Um, the next book I'm going to tell you about is... One, probably one of the best covers that I've read all year, and that is What We Lose by Zinzi Clemens. And this book is hard to describe because its style is so unique, but what this is, is this is a novel about a young girl dealing with the fact that her mother, who has been strong, a strong person in her life, um, personality and all of that, um, has been diagnosed with breast cancer. And this is her dealing with that. Now, this book is written in a very unique way. It's sort of excerpts, sometimes poetic, sometimes graphic, and um, they have graphs. And it, she does a lot of really clever stuff, but she never loses the heart of the story. And she never takes away from the fact that this, yeah, that, that the main character, the protagonist, is learning who she is through a very difficult situation. Um, yeah, you guys, this book is so good. It reminded me a lot of um, In Style to like Department of Speculation by Jenny Olaf. Or if you like sort of those things where they're, they're broken up, that sort of stylistic choice, I highly recommend uh, What We Lose by Zinzi Clemens. I loved this book. Um, again, the next book I'm not going to talk much about because it was my book club book choice and I talked about it in my June wrap up. But all I will say is Kiss of the Spider Woman by Manuel Puig came out, I think, in 1978 or 79. If you haven't read it, read it. That's all I'm going to say. Um, because this is, it is powerful. It is amazing. It is classic literature that still the test of time. You will not regret picking up this book. Promise. Okay? Check out my uh, book club review if you guys want in on a um, more detailed description of it. Um, but since I've talked about it for three videos in a row, I thought I would make this one shorter. So speaking of book club books for Around the World in a Thousand Pages book club, the book two books ago was Catalan Street by Magda Zabo. Now it turns out Magda Zabo is a Hungarian writer and she is very well known in Hungary. We have three books out by New York Review of Books Classics um, by her translated into English. The Door, which is freaking fantastic. Catalan Street, which is freaking fantastic. And I have one more, which I haven't read, which is staying on my shelf because I don't want it to to be done and over with. Um, this is the story of basically of three houses in a row and the families in them during World War II. And what happens as the war progresses? What is brilliant about this book is that the war is always present, but never in the forefront. This is really about people. This is really about relationships. This is about marriages gone sour. This is about um, how war affects people and changes who they are. Um, this book, it, she is just a magnificent writer. If you are really looking for something to challenge yourself on how people can use words and language to paint pictures and get you emotionally invested in characters and situations, this book is right there. So this is Ketelin Street by Magda Zabo. Highly recommend it. Highly recommend it. Okay, so the next three books could interchange in the top of this list, if there is a top. 
but all of them are so freaking fantastic. So the next one I'm gonna tell you about is So Lucky by Nicola um, Griffith. This is the story of, what is our, um, Mara is our main character's name. Mara uh, is the head of an AIDS um, research or um, aid clinic. She is on the top of the world. And at the start of the story though, her marriage has fallen apart. Her um, wife is leaving her. They are getting a divorce. And very soon at the beginning of the book, she is diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. And that changes her whole life. And this is the story of a woman who relied on her body, was strong, finding new ways to be strong. It is heart-wrenching at times. It is very, very powerfully done. And it's also about the fear and what happens when our world changes and things that occur that we associate with our with the disease um, that may not be associated, but how we can make them compound ourselves. It is so well done. And um, Nicola Griffith reads the audiobook of this, and it is freaking fantastic. Um, I have never stopped thinking about it since I finished it. So that is So Lucky by Nicola Griffith. Highly highly recommend. The next book also doesn't need much talking about because it won the Women's Prize this year, and that's Home Fire by Camilla Shamsi. But if you haven't read this book, you really need to. This is, this is a powerful story of three um, Pakistani Brits and how their life is affected by so much. Um, I, I don't want to go into it too much because I know I've talked to it about it a lot. But this is the older sister go, comes to America to finish her PhD. The younger sister is in law school and the younger brother, who is the twin to the law school sister, has been involved in the radical um, uh, movements in Syria, I believe, and has gone over there. And it is all about that. It is about racism in the UK. It's about self-racism. There's a character who's like an MP um, who um, has sort of this inner sort of hatred towards who he is and where he comes from. It is, it is freaking brilliant. It's worth all the praise. It was shortlisted for the Man Booker. It won the Women's Prize, deservedly so. If you, I have already started to collect all of Camilla Shamsi's stuff because I think she's probably one of those writers that has never written a bad book. So, Home Fire by Camilla Shamsi, amazing, amazing, amazing. The next book is the only nonfiction on this list, and that is uh, This Will Be My Undoing, a collection of essays by Morgan Jerkins. This is a, um, I, I mean, I think the tagline tells you everything you need. Living at the intersection of black, female, and feminist in white America. It is um, powerful. It is eye-opening. It is intelligent, well thought out. She is fantastic. I have a little crush on her. Um, and she will make you think about things in different ways that you have never thought about before. And she is an amazing essayist. And I cannot wait to see what she does next as a writer. Um, but it's hard to really give you more than that. I'm just read it or listen to it. She reads the audiobook. It's um, really worth it. So this will be my undoing by Morgan Jerkins. So if you guys haven't guessed what the number one book for 2018 so far that I've read this year, um, it should really come as no surprise. But Red Clocks by Lenny Zumas, hands down the best novel that I've read this year. Stylistically, it's the most interesting novel I've read this year, story-wise, timeliness-wise, everything. So this is set sort of in the near future when Roe versus Wade is overturned and women's productive rights are under attack from many different angles. Also, the laws regarding families and how families are built are being attacked. We have five main characters, five women. We have the biographer who is trying to get pregnant to have a baby before the deadline when the laws change. She is single and there will come a point where when the laws change, she will be unable to um, get a baby on her own. She is also writing the biography of this explorer, which is f freaking brilliantly interlaced in the story. And in what it does is it adds a poetic sense of feminism throughout time. We have a young girl um, who I believe is called The Daughter. It's been a while since I've read it. Um, but she is, the, um, she is a high school girl that gets pregnant. We have The Mother who loves her children, no doubt, but sometimes is tired of just being defined by her motherhood. Um, we have the... Um, Oh, what is her name? I can't remember what they call her. But we have sort of like the woman who 
everyone goes to now that medicine won't allow them, all the women go to for health things. Um, she lives in a hut and she's sort of on the outskirts of town and I can't remember what they call her. The Mender, the Mender. And she is so good. So you have those five women, the biographer, the explorer that I told you about, the daughter, the mother, and the Mender. What's fantastic is each section is from one of their points of view. Um, but as you read other sections, you learn more about your other characters, like their names. Um, and there are sections that are defined by what they do, and other sections that are defined by who they are. Um, it is, so good, you guys. It is so good. It's so thought-provoking. It's intelligent, and it's page-turning, and it's the writing will blow you away, and it's hands down the best book that I have read in 2018, and it is the third book I read in 2018, and it is still with me, and I still think about it all the time, and that is Red Clocks by Lenny Zumas. So have you guys read any of these books or any of these books on your top 10 of 2018 so far? What are a couple of your books that you would put on your top 10 list? Oh, so I'm getting ready to fly away, but as always, I hope you guys have a fantastic day. And if you are a return subscriber, thank you so much. If you are new to my channel, please subscribe. I hope you like what you saw. And as always, until next time, happy reading, and I'll talk to you later. Bye!